So I think I have one last slide, Jay. And this is this one, because uh, as you know, we use computers and, 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 and we work with all these information. We work with terabytes of, of data. And uh, one thing you should remember when you work with a computer is that you cannot run it backwards, okay? When you use a computer to process some data, when you, for example, add up numbers, okay, you have 10 numbers, you add up, and it add up, it finds the sum. You cannot use the sum to find the 10 numbers, okay? It's been, it's been forgotten. So what a computer really is doing with all this information often is to, to reduce the information. If we, for example, have, have a human genome and we would like to, to answer the question, is it likely that this person will get cancer before the age of 60 or something like that? And if the two answers, yes and no, are uh, equally likely, we will, we will take this entire genome and then we will boil it down to one bit. And then of course, if the answer is no, hopefully, then we cannot get the information back that was in the genome. So computers are actually throwing information away when they process data. And this is, they're not generating information, they are throwing information away. So, so this is actually the, the fundamental reason why hot air is blowing out of the back of the cabinet <laughs> of a, a computer. I mean, this is where the information goes. <laughs> and, and it, it's not, a, it's not a joke. I mean, uh, Jay is a physicist, and, and I mean, if you need to forget something, you need to dissipate energy. You, need, need, you can only get rid of the information by dissipating energy. And I mean, our brain is using around 40 watts, forgetting all the time, and after all these cocktails, I mean, we'll forget <laughs> even more. But, but, but the take-home message is also here that you should not just put a lot of information into these analyses, because you, often you, you want to end up just with a yes or no to something, one bit. So, so you sh should think about that when you, when you crack all these uh, data. Only include data that actually could sort of relate to the answer to the question you, you, you ask. Okay, so, so this was the, uh, the end. Uh, and of course, a lot of people have sort of contributed to this work um, and, and I, I don't mention them, them here, but I'll just thank uh, Jay and his friends again and also all of you for your, your attention. It's a great, great place and a great, great day. Thank you very much. So we have time now for only three questions, and then you can take uh, Cern to the bar and do whatever you want with him. <laughs> so, uh, yes, probably not. You shouldn't be that bad, I think. But uh, does anyone have a question? Ah, oh, that's really far away, man. <laughs> okay. Hey, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, this is going back to something you said in the beginning, uh, you didn't elaborate on it, uh, however, do you as a scientist see it as a problem uh, or maybe it's the only solution that you know, it's, uh, private entities are actually mapping the genome uh, and I guess there will be copyrights involved in the mapping and so on. What will happen in the future if this becomes like a big thing that several, like Novo Nordisk, for example, they will own the mapping of the insulin genome producing thing. Yeah, uh, I think we should Thank you. we should discriminate a little bit between different things because what has deep been debated a lot is sort of the the patenting of genetic tests. I mean, should you pay a fee because you test your genome for a certain disease? I mean, this has been debated a lot, and I think also that is uh, a, a problem. Still, we have to remember that somebody invests a lot of money in making that test, and then you can, you, you, you can use it, so it's not so, so clear-cut. And also with the drugs, I mean, the, the states are not um, paying for making drugs. 
I mean, it, it's, it's organized via companies on, 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 on this um, uh, planet, and, and, and it is a, a business, and drugs would not be made unless the companies could protect uh, things. So, so I think for the drugs, uh, at least, I have no problem that the companies also can protect their uh, discoveries and so on and get their investment ba uh, back. At least I see no alternative because uh, uh, who, who else are, are making uh, drugs? The state is not m m making drugs. But, uh, but I think it, it, it's getting, we're getting into a problem with, with the patents that cover genes and, and mutations which are found in genes that where you have to pay in order to, to sort of use a test to find those mutations and so on. I think that's a, uh, that's a big problem and, and um, of course also these patents will be run out, uh, will run out and some of them will, will expire and so on. But this is more of a problem in my view than the conventional drug patents because we should remember that most drugs which are being worked on, they flop and it costs billion, billions of dollars each time. So, so, uh, so the risk that those who develop drugs uh, take, we have to factor that in if we want new drugs and if we want individualized drugs, there should be some kind of, of return that should cover all the, the failed projects on. But, but the diagnostics, I think, is much more of a, of a problem. Any other question? Mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe uh, it's more related to these uh, mental illness uh, problems that you're describing, right? The, the, the data set from, from St. Hans. Uh, I'm wondering to, what, to which degree are you looking at correlating the guys who write the, I mean the doctors who actually uh, propose the diagnose or make the diagnose with the clustering of the patients? Because within many of these things there are very gray areas of personal judgment by doctors and if you need to know anything about uh, yeah, is it environment or is it inheritance and all these classical underlying questions, I think the whole social structure around the diagnosis needs to be correlated as well. Uh, and especially with mental illnesses where there's been a lot of studies documenting that people who actually submit to a mental illness program, uh, there were even some doctors doing it and they couldn't get out. I don't you maybe know this study, it's a classic. Mm -hmm. There were some d doctors going to the mental hospitals and it's way back, so maybe it has changed. And they said, I hear, speak, I hear voices. And they said that only once. And they were not let out of the mental hospital until they actually said, well, okay, yes, I'm sick, I will undergo treatment. So uh, otherwise they behave normally. So these things are also very big issues. And, and are you trying to factor that into your, uh, to your calculations? Yeah, I think I, I would be more modest because what, what we try is simply just to put patients in groups. And, and, and I mean, we could hope that that doctor would actually be put in a group of, of his own or her own uh, and being sort of an outlier based on what actually was written in that patient record because it didn't have a lot of similarities be, uh, with, with the other patients w which heard voices and, and so on. But I mean, what we're doing here is much more uh, simple, but we just try to improve on the present day situation where you lump everybody together in one group as you say, okay, these are lumped together. Can we make it more fine-grained and can that then be used to, to um, make the treatments different? I mean, we're, again, we're just the computer guys uh, here. We are not taking that data and, and then use it in the, in the hospital. But of course, that's the hope all over the world that these methods for, for looking at the phenotypes in a much more fine-grained way, they will be used by, by the doctors together with the, with the, with the genes. So I, 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 um, I acknowledge the, the problem that you talk about, but, but I hope you, you also can see that we just try to improve on this situation where you say one size fits all, it's one treatment to all those. Who, who hear voices, and I, of course it's not one treatment today even, but, but yeah, I hope you get the idea in, in where we sort of fit into the, to the healthcare. Uh, we're just hackers, I mean, we're not, <laughs> not doctors. And the last question?
Oh yes, I want to thank you very much for, for the show here. <laughs> um, I, I have a question uh, regarding um, when you Google all these words from all these journals, uh, from all these patients, um, do you somehow add the, the year or the date when these um, words were actually written? Because everybody knows that, um, it's, uh, that very old records have another notion, you know, words don't mean the same thing in 1950 as they do 2012. So it's very, to me, it must be very important to know that some words that may be um, uh, even used today have a different, totally different notion back in, in, in days before. So, so the, 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 the date of that word means something when you want to Google them and, and make new groups. Yeah. Is, is that so? I think uh, you're raising a very um, important point, and, and we totally uh, agree. So in this study here that, that, that hasn't been published yet, but uh, the way I showed some, some results, we, we only work with the last 14 years where ICD, the ICD system ha has been in this version 10. And of course, even in these 14 years, there's been some shift in, in, in some use, but we are not going back 20 and, 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 and 30 years for the reason you say, because then we would have to interface ICD-10 to ICD-9 and 8 and, 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 and so on. And on top of that, we would have to deal with the problem that this uh, phenotype would no longer be called paranoid schizophrenia, but something else. I, I entirely agree. This is a, a, um, um, a possible pitfall with this type of analysis, but we've tried to, to avoid that, but by using a, a smaller period of time where where there should be more homogeneity in how, um, how words are the used. words are used. But as you know, in the mental area, there might even be disagreement between different hospitals how they actually uh, code uh, the diseases and so on. So it, it's for sure an uh, important problem, very important point. So I agree with that. OK, OK, this is very nice, very nice, but now let's have fun with the scientists at the bar, yes? <laughs> <laughs> so another applause for Søren Brunner, please. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for your good questions. I want to mention that like in five or ten minutes, uh, Budaditya Chattopadhyay is going to do his uh, sound performance, which you shouldn't miss because it shows you a city in a different way. Thanks. <laughs>